Somebody now that was um, kind of up on that stage, that squared circle. You know, Elvis was, has been called. It was the first really unplugged uh, that anybody did. And it's kind of what Elvis was doing in the dressing room. And anybody that's familiar with the special, I feel like I'm preaching to the choir. But, you know, he was sitting around in the dressing room when Steve Bender heard him and the guys. And said, we, we've got to put that in the show. We've got some way to put that in the show. And it became a very um, effective part of the show to really show Elvis and to, to, to how he got along with his musicians. And uh, one of those musicians is, uh, is, is here tonight. And if we could put our hands together for the, for the sticks from Sweet Point, Louisiana. Mr. King, hey, Tom, Tana. Thank you for, uh, for, for coming. I would say thank you for coming to Nashville, but you live in Nashville. I'm here, yes. I'm here. <laughs> Well, we appreciate Karen bringing you over. And talk to me a little bit. You walked in and you saw this stage. What went through your mind about your memories of, of sitting up there with Elvis and, and, and beating on that guitar case? Well, the stage is not big enough. <laughs> it was a little bit bigger, not much bigger than that. Yeah. And uh, when we first got there, they took us out there. They took me and Scotty and the rest of the guys uh, out to look at the stuff. We said, okay. We went out, looked at it. And went back to the dressing room and they said, Well, will that work? We said, No, it won't work. I said, How come? I said, It's too small, first of all, and uh, it's not just not big enough for all these people. So I said, What can we do? I said, Well, what, 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 we've done this a lot of times. We've played on guitar cases and everything. He said, Can we do that tonight? I said, I think we can. So that's what we did. As soon as, as soon as we found out we could do it, that changed the whole scene you know, of the stage. And that was fun. Yeah. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> and it showed a lot of the humor that you guys had together, too. I mean, you guys had spent so much time together on the road in cars, throwing shoes out of windows and things like that. That you know, you're, the, 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 the fun you guys had was evident in, in, in watching this special. It must have been fun to actually do it, too. It was fun. To, to, to we, we used to play tricks on everybody, especially Elvis. <laughs> so, uh, but anyhow, that's what we did. I, I hate to say what we did, dude. <laughs> well, you kept your job as long as you wanted, so it must have been, it must have been okay. In, in, in all the times of, uh, of, of you being a rock and roll drummer uh, and being, uh, ladies and gentlemen, being in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, Mr. DJ. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody talks about Elvis's influence on them as singers and, and musicians and, and wanting to go into music, but there's so many drummers out there, like, you know, Ringo Starr, Charlie Watts from the Rolling Stones, so many drummers that, uh, that listened to the records, and, and they were buying DJ Fontana records, playing drums, and they're still, they're still listening to DJ Fontana records. Yeah, I had a couple of guys at my house not long ago, Charlie Watts come by, and uh, the, the, the guitar player come by. Ronnie Wood. Ronnie Wood come yeah. by. So we've had a good time, you know, talking to those guys. Yeah, you need to invite me over for spaghetti some night when, uh, when, the, when the Rolling Stones are at the house. <laughs> I'll <have> the next time. <laughs> well, we're going to recreate right now the 68 Comeback Special. We want you to have a place of honor right over there and, and sit back and, and watch this, uh, this whole festivities. Jeff, if you'd come in and help DJ to his area over there. And what I wanted to talk to you guys.